Welcome to Maze Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is edit distance. Given two words, word one, word two, find the minimum number of operations required to convert word one to word two. You have three operations permitted on a word. You can insert a character, delete a character, or replace a character. For instance, we're given the words horse and Ross. We want to return an output of three because at the first position, we can replace H with R. Um, then we move the R from the source at the third position, and then remove the E at the last position, and then we'll end up with the word Ross. And this is going to be the minimum number of steps required to get there. Here's an, another example, and um, you get the idea. So this problem was actually from yesterday, and I actually know the solution because I've seen this before. But as I was explaining it, I realized it wasn't enough. This problem is actually very complicated. So what I decided to do was save this for today. I'm going to do a deep dive on the whiteboard and go through the steps that you might take in order to get to the optimal solution. Here we're giving the words horse and our target word Ross. Now initially when we see this problem, we might begin with a two-pointer solution. Maybe we'll start with a pointer here and a pointer here. Given that, we can perhaps write some sort of list of operations, some conditions, uh, if these words don't equal one another, to either replace, delete, or insert that word. So here, maybe we say, oh, let's replace this with R. Then we can move our pointers up to the O. And if the words equal one another, then we could just move it up because we know that they're fine. Um, and keep continuing this down until we count the number of steps to get our number of steps required to take this word to this. But very quickly, you see this sort of manipulation of the string as we move our pointers up ahead isn't going to give us the right answer. Like here, if, with what I described, I just counted one, two, and then I have to delete these two. That would be. Um, four steps, right? And we know that actually the best solution would be to get rid of the R here uh, and move this S up and then just delete the E at the very end. And that would be three steps. So at each pointer, we actually need to check all three possibilities of being able to replace um, inserting the word or deleting the word right off. So quickly we realize, yeah, this one pass thing isn't going to ever work we have to use some sort of recursive algorithm to check every permutation at each position to check what's the minimum number of steps that you need to take to get this word to this. Now that we know our solution is likely recursive, there are two intuitions that are going to be essential for solving this problem. Intuition one, what are the minimum steps needed to take a string into a blank string? Well, we know that we can delete three characters, uh, and that's going to make a blank string. So the minimum number of steps to do that would be three. In the same way, what is the minimum number of steps to take a blank string into any word? And that's obviously going to be an insert. We have to insert ABC, and no matter what, that's going to take three steps. Now, that's simple enough. Intuition two, though, is a little bit more complicated. As we know, we want to have three different kind of operations, right? And each one of these will take one operation. If we want to take ABC and make it ACC, we have to replace the C here. If we want to take ABC, make that DC, we have to delete A here. And if we want to take ABC and make it AABC, we have to insert A here. So given that we're going to start with two pointers, we've already realize that we have to start at a certain comparison. What are some of the steps that need to take? And once we realize that we do need to make some sort of change, what's going to be the rest of the string that we need to pass recursively? So say uh, position one, A, A is the same, right? So if that's the case, then there's no step needed to be taken. We just move on to the next one. So we would just pass on BC, DC to the next recursion. Well, what about if B and C were different? And they are different. We know that we have to replace B to C. 
right? So that's one operation. What's the next string that we want to pass into our recursion? And that's just going to be C and C, right? Because we already know B and C are now taken accounted for, so C and C will be the next. But that's different when we do a delete. Say that we pass these two, st two strings and we check first A and D. They're different. Okay, let's try deleting A. So we delete A and that would automatically make B and C be the next recursion call. But we don't move this B and C at all. We only move this A here because now we deleted that we know that accounts for it. Uh, well, we don't know that yet, but we want to check next to see if these uh, next pointers are equal to one another. So this part's going to be like this is plus one plus one each time in our recursion, but this is going to be plus one and nothing because we haven't done anything to this string. We're just going to pass the same part. So the pointer will be the same. What about here when we do an insert? Well, in the same way, um, say that we start with A and A, and we check, okay, is it the same? They are, so let's move on to the next string, or next position, and now it's B and A, right? And say we try to delete, and now we want to try our insert. Well, if we do an insert, we know we're going to insert this, so we can automatically know that that part will be accounted for. So if that's the case, what happens here is we insert an A in here, right? But we're not going to move our pointer here. We're going to keep that the same in our next recursion call. It's only here that we can say, okay, A and A been taken for. Now we say, okay, we're going to insert A here. So that's been taken care of. So let's now check B and C next. So our recursive call for our next point, the pointer moves right um, on our target string instead. So that is huge. If we realize this, then very quickly we can come up with some sort of algorithm to check for every permutation that we can do, whether it's a replace, whether it's a delete, or whether it's an insert. All right, so let's start coding this out, right? So where do we begin? Well, we know that this is likely a recursive solution, right? So let's start with getting the lengths of both word one and two. Uh, I'm just gonna call it W1. That's gonna be equal to the length of word one and w2 is going to be equal to the length of word 2. Now we want to write our helper method for the recursive calls, right? So we'll call that just helper. And we're going to pass in i and j, which are the two pointers, one pointing to word 1 and j pointing to um, word 2. So first, what are our base cases? Well, basically, there's three, right? Either i and j are empty, or the pointers are exceeding the length of the words, or i is exceeding, um, is empty and j is not, or j is empty and i is not. So how do we write that out? We can say we're not passing in the we're, we're going to passing in the pointers. So uh, our base case will start with if i is greater or equal to w1, which is the length of word one, and j is greater or equal to word two, which basically means the pointers have exceeded the length of the words, both of them. We're going to return zero because we're done there's there's nothing left to uh, make any operations with but there's two others right if i um, is greater or equal to word one and perhaps j is not since we've already checked this we know that j is not we're going to return um, the length of word two minus j so whatever is left in w2 we're going to return that number in the same way if i is not empty, but j is empty, then we're going to return whatever is left um, in, in the first word, because this is basically going to be just delete, right? Because target word is empty, we have a bunch of words in word one, so we're just going to delete all those. Uh, whatever length that is, we'll return that. Cool, so now we have our base case. Now what do we do? Well, there's two conditions that can happen. We're going to be comparing our two pointers. Either they're equal to one another, these characters are the same, so we can just move on to our, um, increase our pointer for both i and j, and we don't need to make any operation, right? We just move it, move, move it forward. There's no operation that's going to be had. Or they're different, so we'll try all three operations and pass in the rest of 
um, do our proper increases in the pointer and just pass, pass in the rest of the recursive calls. And then we'll just return the minimum of those three operation try things that we tried. So I'll show you what I mean. Like say if word one i equals word two j, uh, then we know that we can just move on, right? We can say, well, uh, number of steps is going to be equal to whatever we pass here plus one j plus one. We can just move both our pointers. Else, they're not equal to one another. Well, we need to try all three of our operations, right? So we'll have to call our helper three times, but we'll also add one to whatever it returns because we know that one operation has been done to try to get the strings um, to match, right? So in our replace, we're going to say helper. We'll still increment our pointers by one, but we're going to add one. We're going to add one operation. In the same way, if we do a delete, we're going to say, hey, we're going to delete this character off of um, word one, so we can increase that, but we, we're going to continue with uh, the pointer at j at the same place, and we'll add one here. And finally, if we do an insert, well, uh, we could increment our j pointer, but we're going to be staying on the same point at our source word. So that's going to be j plus 1 like this. So great, we have to run all three of those. Once we get the values for all three, then we can say, all right, man, steps is going to be the minimum between these three, because that's that's the problem, right? We want to get the minimum number of steps. And that would be to just return steps now. So that should work in our helper method. So what do we uh, need to call? We just return our, um, our helper, and we're going to just pass in 0, 0, the initial ones. And let's try to run our test case, see what happens. And yes, oh my god, we solved it, and we're feeling good about this. Like, yes, I'm a genius. Like, this is great. Let's see what happens. Um, and slowly, it's why is this taking so long? You're feeling good. You're wondering. This is exceeding time, like what's going on here? Have we hit an infinite loop? And yeah, time limit exceeded. So that's disappointing because we thought we'd come up with this brilliant solution. Uh, but what's going on here? Well, think about it, right? Every time we call one of these, we're going to have to call another three of these and another three of these. And definitely what's going on here is making repeat operations. Like we're checking the same um, I and J's, and we're doing, each time we do that, we have to generate three more and check the same ones again. So it's like exponential amounts of, um, of repeat operations going on here. So how can we take care of that? Well, how about a cache? How about some uh, memoization? We could have a cache here or, or a memo. I'm gonna make that a dictionary and say, hey, if we've already called um, this operation for I and J, then store it and then just just um, return the value that we've already stored because that'll always be the same, right? So what can we do? Basically, we'll just say, um, hey, if our tuple i and j is not in memo, I don't think it's is, if i and j not in memo, okay, then we'll just call all this, right? And once we're finished with that, then we'll, um, store our i and j in, in our memo here, just so steps, um, and there. Otherwise, it is in our memo, so steps just equals what? Memo of i and j here. Right? So we set our steps. Um, make sure to do that here as well, steps equals memo. Oh, I'm sorry, steps equals, oh no, we've already said that. Okay, so steps is here. Uh, once we get this passed, we store it in a dictionary, and otherwise we'll just return what we've stored already here in our memo. And let's, let's give that a try. And yes, that got accepted. And now you're feeling great because this is brilliant. This is so smart. But this still isn't the optimal solution. Um, and here's the thing, if there's this memoization solution, there is a very likely dynamic programming solution as well. And if you can make this 
jump to figuring out this work, like these recursive solutions to being able to move to the dynamic programming solutions like that, you'll become a dynamic programming master. Um, and this one's very clever. I have to go to the whiteboard again to show how this works. We've already come up with our recursive solution. We've already come up with our recursive solution using memoization. So is there a dynamic programming solution? The very first thing we want to do is try to generate a dynamic programming array and see if there's any pattern that we can take advantage of to build this array. Here I've built um, a dynamic programming matrix where this represents the source word and this represents our target word. I've also represented the I's and J's, the pointers here on the point. And notice that I've included negative one. And that's because we will need that in order to build our initial row and column for our base case. Basically, say we're trying to build the word horse and turn that into a blank string. So, so sorry, say that we're, we're giving the words HO up to here. How many steps will it take to build into a blank string? And that basically we have to do deletes, right? We've already gone through that. So if it's HO, that's going to take two deletes. In the same way, HOR will take three deletes. So all this is is just the number of words that it will take to delete to become a blank string. Um, on the other side, say that we have a blank string and we want to form our target word. Well, this is just going to be an insert, right? If it's just the word R, we would um, insert R. If it's RO, we would insert RO, so that would be 2. And ROS would be 3. So this is great. Now we have our base cases already filled out for us, and the logic's not that complicated. Now the trick is, is there some sort of condition that we can use to just go down this list and build upon what we've already seen from before? Okay, so say that we have H and R right here. This, uh, imagine like, like our memoization and say, hey man, how many steps does it take to um, build upon this? So that's the part that's a little tricky, right? Because if the words aren't different, we know that we could have built upon either, um, we know that we have to add at least one, but which operation from before do we want to add one to? But remember, we're trying to get the minimum. Each one of these represents some sort of operation from before. Here, we can think of that as the replace. Like we just moved our pointer up two points, uh, or we moved our pointer up on both I and J. Um, so whatever here is going to be the replacement for, and we can add that from here. Or we can do it from delete. I'm sorry, this was an insert. Or we can do it from, from the delete operation. So knowing that, then all that means is from these three points, take the minimum one. Take the minimum one and add one. So here, zero is actually the minimum. So we'll add zero. And we'll say add one to zero. And that's going to equal one. But that's only if these words aren't equal to one another. Because remember our function, if, if the words equal one another, then all we would do is take the one previous to that, uh, where the pointer is minus one and minus one for both sides. So knowing this, let, let's try to go through this and think about how um, we would build this. O and R, they're not equal to one another. So take the minimum of one of these and add one. So here, one and one are the minimum. So we just add one plus one. That's going to be two. What about here? R and R. Oh, they're equal to one another, right? So just take the previous, um, the one diagonal top left, because that's going to be the same. Since we know we're not adding any operations here, we're just moving our pointer up on both sides. So that's going to be two. Uh, here, the minimum will be two. So we'll add one to that. So that's going to be three. Here, the minimum will be three, so we'll add one to that, and that's going to be four. Now let's continue on this. Uh, H and O, they're not equal to one another. Take the minimum, add one, so that's two. H and O, or O and O, are equal to one another, so take one, and just bring that over. R and O are not, so take the minimum, one, two, that's yes not, so take the minimum, that'd be three. E and O, that's not it, so minimum, take four. And finally, S, they're not equal to another. Take the minimum, add one, not equal to another, take the minimum, add one. So here that's one, so oops, two. R and S, take the minimum, add one, that's two. S and S are equal to one another. So we'll take the diagonal top left, that's two. Finally, E and 
uh, s r equal to one other. So take the minimum from here, and finally add one. So this, my friends, is going to be our answer, and it is right. Remember from our base case, our answer was three, and What's amazing here is that this is basically an m times n time complexity solution. Um, we've basically optimized the number of calls that we need to make, and we don't need to go through our entire recursive stack. Here. OK, so let's finally type out our dynamic pro programming solution. So we'll keep our lengths word one, word two, because that's going to be important. First, we want to create our dynamic programming matrix. right? So how will we do that? Can be a nested for, and we'll just make um, these values none for now. Say none for what will this be? For a range of it's going to be um, this is going to be the columns, so it'll be range of word one. But remember, we're going to add that blank string in the beginning, right? So we'll add plus one here, and here we'll say in range of w2 and same thing so cool now we have our dynamic programming matrix let's fill out our base case first right so we'll go with our base row and then we'll do base column for base row basically we'll just initialize i equals zero and say four let's say um i guess it'll be the columns since this is the first row four column in range of word one plus one what are we gonna do? We're gonna say DP of row one column C will equal I. And we'll just increment I by one each time. In the same way, we're gonna go with the first column row. Um, so this, I know it's a little confusing, but just think about it, it'll make sense. We're gonna say, okay, for each row at the first column, we'll make that equal to um, I guess I as well. Say I to zero. And there's probably a better way to write this, but, but this this should totally work. So let me first just print that out and make sure that looks okay. And it does look like what we want: zero, one, two, three, five, and zero, one, two, three. Cool. All right, now we need to traverse through our matrix. So for row in range of, now we're going to start at one, right? Because our base, our first row and first column are already filled in. So uh, range, for row in range of word two plus one, and for column in range of one to w one plus one, we want to first check if these rows um, or the characters equal one another, right? So if word one, what we're we doing here, we're checking for word one is going to be column. So column equals word two row. Yeah. Um, then what do we want? We want to uh, basically say for the word column, just make it equal to whatever's above and to its left. So just row minus one, column minus one. And you'll see this pattern. Um, I think I just realized you might have to do a minus one here because, because even though we've added an extra um, column and row for the DP array, the word itself hasn't changed, right? So we have to add a minus one there to get make sure that we're looking at the right character. Else, they're not equal to another, what are we doing? Well, it's um, just like that logic we had in the beginning. We're going to take the minimum between the top left, which was the replace, the top, which was the delete, and the left, which was the insert. So what we do is um, take the top, right, and take the left. And take the minimum of that and add one. Remember that, that's important, add one. Okay, so we're going through our entire array and we're filling it out as we go. Now what? So now we filled it out, we're just going to return the DP of, let's see, the row, which is word two, length of word two, and the column, which is the length of word one. 
And that should be it. Let me see if that works. Oop, looks like I've run to some problem here. Oh no, okay. Looks like that did look good and it's accepted. So this is the preferred solution. Um, and honestly, if I was in an interview and somebody just gave the solution right off the bat, I would believe they've seen this before because I think it's incredible that you, anybody could come up with this solution um, within an hour, have never having seen it. This is like very, very, very advanced stuff. Um, so if it still is not making sense to you, definitely don't feel bad. It barely makes sense to me. Um, for us beginning beginner programmers, like I think iteration here and continually seeing how like recursive and dynamic programming relate um, is the way to go to how to like improve on these. So let me know if you, um, you know, see any problems with this. Like this is, from what I understand, the accepted optimal solution, but there could be a better way. So thank you.